Hello and welcome to that interview show. In this video, I'm going to be interviewing Freya Dahlstrom, aka Cyborg. She's a friend of mine who I've known since high school. Uh, I haven't kept in a lot of touch with her, but I recently ran into her at Supernova as she had a table there. She had a booth in the artist alley, and I figured, well, she is an artist who I've been following for the past couple of years, so I figured I'd, I'd do an interview of her. So we did one over Zoom. Uh, she has done the images for today's video. Ho oh, hoy. It looks insane. Um, but yeah, she does digital art. She does regular hand-drawn paintings, all kinds of stuff. She's made all kinds of OCs and characters. Um, she also does wood burning. She'll be linked down below on her Instagram and Facebook and whatnot, so you're welcome to check out her stuff. And uh, yeah, it will talk about her experience at Supernova, what got her into doing art, her education, her work and life and all that jazz. So enjoy. Hello, Freya. Welcome to that interview show. Hello. Hello, Julian. It's nice to see you. Yes. Uh, it's nice to see the image that is your face. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I look like. Yeah, of course. That's, that's Literally how it works. Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I guess we'll break down part of our friendship, I guess, just to give the viewers some kind of context. We've mm -hmm. known each other since high school. That was something. That was a lot, eons ago. Yeah, it eons was. Ago I mean, you were in a different I, year level as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think but like I, a year apart or something. Yeah, you're in my brother's year level. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I recently ran into you at Supernova where you had a booth. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh shit, it's Freya. Like the fact that you recognize me <laughs> and I'm like, how? I have glasses, dark hair, a beard. What? What is, I look like some weirdo. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> Obviously now oh, I'm yeah. different. I got a different beard, purple hair, still glasses. Yeah, but, so you know. still, the, still that that's the same. But no, I I don't recognize you at all. No, um, <laughs> yeah, no, um, no, I remember because I, I because you follow me because I obviously we're like friends on like you know on like social yeah. media. So like, and I would see that you, um, were posting about your YouTube channel, and so, like, I think that's how I also recognize you. I was like, wait, wait a minute, I've mm. seen you while doom scrolling. <laughs> It's that guy from the YouTubes that I don't watch. <laughs> it's the guy on my, it's the tiny band on my screen. Mm. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that, that was, a, that was like a fun little coincidence um, to run into you there. Mm. I mean, I knew you were going to be there because obviously you had been posting saying that you were at the convention. I'm like, oh, Freddy is mm. somewhere in this place. Well, we'll go look for her. <laughs> you know, I'll drag my friends around. They, they can see reunions that don't make any sense. It's fine. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. But you had a booth. I guess we'll dive into that because obviously that's like the extent of where I know you from now. You've got a booth. You also do wood stuff. But what what was that mm. like doing Supernova? Um, that was a very interesting time. So, um, like to go into it, I have never like done any kind of like uh conventions before. That that was my very first one, and um like my friends basically bullied me into it and I was kind of like oh. at a bit of a yeah it was awesome no um I was <laughs> in a bit of like a lull creative like creative wise because I, I had finished um like majority of my work from uni so I didn't really have much else to do mm. um and like the work I was doing wasn't very like creatively fulfilling it was a lot of like you know it was work mm. so um doing doing um and I had like a lot of free time, so they were like, "Oh, you know, you should do Supernova." And I'm like, oh, "Okay, I have never, I don't really make fan art. I don't really do um, a lot of stuff. I know people who do con stuff do, yeah. um, but no, it was a really, really nice experience. Like meeting people who were like, and it's like you, you meet people from like uh, so many different age groups, um, but you can like share the same interests. And like in Supernova, is that kind of environment where people. Um, can really just be so expressive and like so happy about seeing like their favorite characters or like you know they see something that's really niche um, mm. or they see something that isn't niche at all super popular but they really like the way that you do it and so that's really special so I met a lot of people who were like super sweet there was like one person who was like cosplaying from like a band I really like and um, someone else bought something for that person because um, they didn't have an they didn't like have um uh i don't think they had enough money or something 
um they're like oh i'll buy it for you and so it was like such so sweet and like we're all like going it was a lot of that it was very exhausting but it was it was great but yeah yeah Yeah. so was it your first convention just like in general yeah actually yeah i've never been to supernova beforehand like i remember wanting to go when i was like 13 14 Mm, the quick Um, time yes yeah, of yeah. course. And so I, I missed out, so I, I just had to age regress. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, it was really cool seeing like people who were like my age who really wanted to go to Supernova, who were like walking around and doing that sort of thing. Um, very overwhelming, but also like I'm doing it again. Like I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna be doing uh, Melbourne Supernova and hopefully um, in Interstate Con next year. That's kind of like my goal. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I think the only interstates one I've I've only been to Supernova in Adelaide uh, mm, back in mm. like 2014, I think, because Benedict Cumberbatch was there, and Dad was like, "Hey, let's go to Adelaide. He's gonna be there." <gasps> I was like, "All right, sure." Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> yeah, just casually. <laughs> yeah, no, it was yeah, that was fun. But yeah, I mean, I've I've been going to cons for years now, basically since 2012 when Comic Con first came to Melbourne. Yeah, right. And a lot of the reason we went uh usually as a family was like oh look there's this famous person there's that famous person like it was less about the comics or the cosplay or the pop culture stuff it was more about meeting people who we've grown up interacting with their works so we'd met that year in particular was fantastic we had stan lee who obviously oh wow marvel comics yeah guy yeah yeah, uh, yeah. the we... marvel comics guy yeah yeah basically um and of course there's that kirby guy whatever it, what's his name um <laughs> Oh, I feel like we'll be roasted in the comment comments if I forget what his name is. <laughs> I know, I know his existence. Don't worry. It's, we'll we'll it's cut it. Just, we'll cut it out. <laughs> it's it's not just Dan, but still. Um, but yeah, so like there was him. There was Patrick Stewart, who's from Star Trek. And, oh yeah. You know, X Men, all that, and uh, Mitch Pileggi, who was from X Files. So like, we mm-hmm. had a range of people that we got to meet and we interacted with them. It was like the complete vastness of meeting people you know with Mitch Pileggi he was like just kind of there for the it felt like there for the money just okay cool here's your autograph by like yeah. little interaction kind of thing but then you contrast that at least from my own personal experiences with uh Patrick Stewart who there was so many of us there there was uh five of us there because it was me and my my dad and my two brothers and my brother's friend and he had looked up after signing the autograph and realized how many of us were there and became a conversation starter so like he was still happy to chat with people like him and oh, Stanley lovely. were like constantly like adding more tickets to their booths because they're like obviously they've got heaps of fans and they didn't expect so many people um mm. and obviously Stanley was well he's Stanley he had a, a a lot of personality to himself <laughs> mm, I was mm. I was lucky I got my iPod at the time signed and he uh, put it in his pocket and walked away um so that was <laughs> That was, like, the most panic I've ever had in my entire life. Um, <laughs> Got to run after Stan Lee. Yeah, I know. He's still on the phone. <laughs> it wasn't even a phone. It was just an iPod. But still. Had, <laughs> oh, had... you can have it, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah. So, like, from there we went to stuff like Supernova and other conventions. And it helped being, like, oh, I've got friends who want to go. And every year I've basically gone for the factor of I'm going with my friends it became less and less about like celebrity interactions so hence like my dad yeah, stopped right. going because he's like oh there's no one interesting this year I'll go next year you know like I think this year there was Christopher Eccleston who was like the only person he was interested in meeting and once we had done mm. that, that was the second day we went because he was only there on the second day oh, but, right. uh, but most other experiences have mostly been about hanging out with friends seeing the artist alley seeing all that kind of stuff. Like my my older brother, obviously, you know, Sam, he loves going there just to buy fan art, you know? So mm, he's mm, gone... Like the artist alley? Yeah, he's gone there, yeah. bought fan art from uh, people of characters from like, you know, Overwatch and other video games and stuff. And then he's gone and gotten that signed by the voice actors. So oh, oh, it's like, man. it's a great, it's a great circle. Like if you have them yeah. there, hey, shit, like I had gotten a print uh i can't remember who uh, art stewart i think his name was you know his name's stewart yeah 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 i think stewart Stu- like, stewart yeah yeah great great name for his for his thing and like he had done a picture <laughs> of christopher eggleston so i got that signed you know oh um, that's so cool yeah and a couple of years earlier i had met uh the i 
think it was the the American voice actress who voiced Goku and Gohan uh, from mm-hmm. Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> and so I had met the Japanese voice actress a few years earlier because I'd worked at a convention and she was there and I was at her booth, whatever. And she was nice, but it's like a 70-year-old you know, Japanese woman from a version of the show I've never seen. And then I'm mm. like, well, a couple years later, I think it was actually the next year, the American voice actress was, was there and I was able to find this print that someone had drawn of Goku on like a Dragon Ball and I got her to sign that. So, she, you know, that was unique for her. She, you know, so she got to see yeah. someone's artwork and got to sign it. So it's like, it's a great way to, you know, communicate the two together. Oh, totally. And yeah. it's also like, I mean, that's pretty, it's a pretty big deal for the artist as well because that means that the um the person that they've drawn or like the, the character that they represent like has seen the work and they've gone like, oh, this is so cool. And then they sign it and that's like, yeah, like as you said, like it's kind of like like merging those two together mm. to make the ultimate piece of fan art. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so cool. Like, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, but my, my it was actually interesting because like the people who joined us at like the booth that we were at, um, who were like kind of helping out at the back, but they were also like, "Oh, we got to see Carl Urban. We got to see him." And like they, they were like waiting in line. And I, and I, like it's also it's still like a distant idea to me, the idea of like meeting celebrities, because I just know I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sound like an idiot. So I'm like, I can't, I can't do it personally. Mm. But I think that that's really cool though, like to be able to like show someone, like even like like you buy like art that you like. And then that artist gets to be kind of like part of something as well, and so yeah. like they don't they don't make an ass out of themselves like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's so cool. Yeah, no, it's it's. I think that's like one of the better version things of doing conventions like that, where you have that ability, or just as a fan being able to buy this artwork that someone's made, put their love and labor into, just to put it mm. on a piece of A4 paper that someone could be like, oh my god, I love those characters. I'm buying this, you know. Yeah. So. I, I've always loved that part about Supernova, and I think convention-wise, it's why it's my favorite, because, like, I go to Comic-Con as well, but me and my friend stopped going there, like, two years ago, because it's like, we just don't like the style of it anymore. Yeah, it's, right. It's got a different atmosphere as well, because the, you know, Supernova's always at the convention, the um, showgrounds, so it's always the yeah, same yeah. place, but it's stylized differently each year. They always move things around, which does my head in. So, mm. like, Artist Alley was in a different building this year to what it was in last year. This year's one... Uh, well, this year's one, the room that they used to have for it, is now a garage. So all the cars were parked <laughs> there. So it's like, oh, well, that's not where it is. But at the same time, that place was a lot warmer of a room because it was a lot less airflow. So it's like, it's yeah. better that they've moved it. But then they, the opening thing of the convention was, hey, look, the first thing you go into is a room full of a thousand people. How about having a panic attack? Isn't that, that sound great? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you get a complimentary panic attack. Yeah, exactly. That was my only criticism of this year's Supernova. It's like, it's great to go into Artist Alley to begin with as an idea, but then also, oh no, a room full of a thousand people, this is a bad idea. Especially yeah, when you've totally. gone from, like, because we got there a couple hours in, so there was, wasn't a line to get in. So it was like, you go from an area that's basically empty to this room full of a thousand people. It's like, this is too much. It's just overwhelming. Yeah, like, it messes with your head. Um, I remember, like, the the Saturday, um, and I'm, and, like, I was, like, I was stressed out. I think, but, like, everyone at my table, we, we were all, like, stressed out, even mm. though, like, one of us has done it a couple of times. Um, I was sweaty, but I remember thinking, thank God this is, like, technically, like, this is like, got lots of airflow, because, like, I was just thinking, like, it's gonna yeah. get so hot. It's um, definitely a better room for it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, like, obviously, like, I think over the years, I can imagine that, like, um, and also, this is all from my perspective of, like, cons being, like, I just think of Artist Alley and then <laughs> everything else. Um, but, like, the idea that, like, um, it's going to get really, really, like, packed in there. Um, like, watching the first, like, couple people kind of walking in, because we obviously we were there beforehand and, yeah. like, kind of adjusting, like, stuff and still and thinking, like, oh, shit, I need to, like, make a sign or something because, like, I didn't think about that. Yeah. And they're seeing, like, people, like, walking in, kind of looking at stuff, and obviously kind of being, like, a little... Like, they don't want to immediately run up to something and be like, 50 bucks of my yeah. budget for this. Yeah, like, like they, they want to shop around first, and you're like, uh, what do I do? Do I just sit here and wait yeah. and watch? Or... 
Just, oh my god, yeah. the amount of eye contact I made and smiled, and then like people would look away because obviously <laughs> it's like you know they they're yeah. like nervous, and I'm nervous, but I also don't want to seem. <laughs> I don't want to seem needy. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're there to make a profit, but you're also like, oh, I don't want to seem like, come, come to my booth. I'm not a, I'm yeah. not a vampire. I'm a friend. You know, oh, I, so. I started doing that at the end as a bit. I was like, come look at, like, if they made, like, eye contact with me for, like, more than two seconds, I'd be like, hey, <laughs> hey there, Trump. <laughs> and, and they liked it. They thought it was funny, but, like, yeah. um, it, so it worked. But, like, the, that was kind of, like, a lot of coping with the anxiety that kind of comes with just being being there and being observed whether you like it or not yeah um yeah. but yeah uh yeah like lots of staring to space when like there was like a lull as well which was kind of kind of needed i think um but yeah like walking around was a great time because i managed to do that on the second day i was too scared to leave my booth on the first mm. which was a stupid idea um if anybody is thinking about uh, like having a booth of supernova as an artist, take a little break. Yeah, <laughs> do it because it's so much better for your for your brain. And um, there was actually something you mentioned um, about like kind of like meeting celebrities. And in my case, it's not necessarily like meeting celebrities, but it's like being aware of people who you follow on Instagram or like you follow on social media. That's really and like they're quite they're quite well known in like the uh, Australian artist sphere. Right. Mm. Um, there's a specific enamel pin artist who I've really liked for um, the last like year or so. Um, and they've kind of like inspired, like they kind of would like inspire me to think like, oh, I can make my own or like stuff like that. Um, and I met them and I, and I, I was like, oh, I love your pins so much. Cause I was exhausted. I was mm. like, my brain had like completely like, like I, it was gone. Like it fizzled out. And yeah. I was like, I really like yours. See, I made a pin because I was obviously wearing my pin and they were like, oh, that's so cool. Equally as like, like, fit, like their brain had like fizzled out as well. They yeah. were tired. I was tired, but I was like, so cool. I will buy it. Um, and then after, like they followed me on Instagram and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's so, it's like, it's like meeting like artists who have been doing it for quite a while and but like getting to be like talking to them because you you kind of stop really like think it's like a celebrity thing where it's like oh my god a real person yeah you're human yeah, which is exactly. a bit weird but like it's I think it just happens to everyone yeah I think I mean some people especially like the celebrities who go to like with their big booths and whatever like they I've I've experienced different mindsets with them some of them love talking to the people love like getting experiences from them sharing stories but some are just mm. like we're here to just get an autograph and leave, you know, like, that's it. Like, the experience yeah. is just being in my presence for five seconds and then leaving, and it's like, well, there goes $120, you know, like, <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter, because sometimes the, the urge to, see, like, say Carl Urban, exactly, like, I only saw him because my brother had bought a ticket to see him, so I was in yeah. line with my brother, <clears throat> with both of my brothers and my brother's girlfriend, and they, you know, it was my brother and his girlfriend went and got the autograph. Me and my younger brother were just standing there just like, oh, look, it's Carl Urban. It's that guy from that Riddick film. And, like, at least that's what I was thinking because I'm like, I don't I was going to say, <laughs> like, I was going to say, I'm like, wow, Riddick. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not Riddick. He's the other guy. Um, but, yeah, it's like, it's like that kind of thing. It's like I'm in my head thinking, oh, this is funny because it's like that guy who's in, like, all these movies and shows that I've grown up with, you know, Lord of the mm. Rings and Dread and whatever, and everyone's here for the boys. I'm like, that's cool, you know? Like, my brother's mm. doing a boys figurine signed. Whatever, you know, you do what you want to do. You mm. know, I had already experienced my thing of my – because I didn't really care that much for meeting color. But I'm like, I was just stood there. I didn't even get to say hello because I'm like, it, I'm not the important one. I'm not the one who paid. Um, yeah 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 and like they obviously have that mindset too of like whoever's at the front of the desk who brings forward the little certificate thing the little ticket you know that's the important person that's the person who paid for the experience to meet you know and it, it can be completely different like like with Carly had a lot of people there to get autographs whereas I had met mm -hmm. uh Neil Fanning earlier who voiced Scooby Doo you know oh and yeah I had bought two different tickets to meet him because I'm like I'll get one <laughs> autograph and then a second autograph and I'll get a photo as well and I'll be like well like do one first and then go back and do other stuff and then come back and get another one so like and that was fun because like you know that's yeah. just what I wanted to do you know I got my money's worth of the experience yeah totally but yeah so it's yeah it's fun um 
it, in terms of with Supernova, because were you there on the Friday as well, or just like like to set up stuff, or did you just show up early on the Saturday? Here's all my stuff in a carton of boxes. Oh, dump it oh on my the table. god. I thinking about that gives me the sweats. No, <laughs> um, I I was there. I was there Friday. So mm. we we um so artist alley opened from like nine to five just for people to set up. So yeah, that yeah. was kind of the, my very first taste of what it was like. Like watching people bring in like their huge suitcases, mm. setting their stuff up, seeing how big people's boots can get. Because um with the tables, I think they were like we were like in an alley um. That was I can't remember the, I can't remember exactly what it was, but we basically got a discount because we had like we were in like the zine area. Mm. Um, we didn't really, and we were like, oh, okay, we don't really. None of us make zines, right? So it was kind of like I don't know. So we, if we made something, we could like um, get a discount because yeah. the tables are quite expensive. I think it's like two fifty. Yeah, which you know I've you can, it's we can it, but yeah, yeah, but like it's kind of but like I saw people with like two tables like two tables worth and it was like mm. those are people who have been doing it for a very long time and they have like the merch to like spread out yeah and they're like i have the experience of knowing that this is where i get my main portion of money so yeah yeah, yeah exactly like the the people who make um con cons like their their job and like mm. they travel for them and stuff like that and um yeah, like, meeting the people who do that sort of thing and, like, kind of talking so casually about it, like, being like, oh, are you guys going to go to, like, Sydney Nova? Or, like, Sydney Nova? I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure how the kids say it. Um, but, and we're Probably like... Probably Sydney Nova, oh. yeah. I'm thinking, like, Sydney Nova? I don't know. <laughs> Melbourne Nova? Yeah, who cares? I, I know. I, yeah. But I think it's... I just basically say Melbourne Nova because I'm like, oh, there's more than one Nova. It's okay. Um, you're, you're hip now. You call it by an acronym. <laughs> oh, Yeah. I'm a I'm a con artist. Wait, mm. don't cut that out. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but like meeting, yeah, like meeting people who say like, oh, like you're gonna do this one, gonna do that one. And it's like, oh my god, like this is so intense. And like walking past their booth later, you know, just because like getting like a break and just seeing how much merch they have, mm. um, it's a really cool experience because I think again, it's like the celebrity thing where it's like you kind of realize that you're like with a person yeah. and like or like you talked to a person but then like when you see them in their like in their environment where they're thriving um and you're like oh my god no now i'm intimidated now mm. i'm scared um but yeah no it was really cool seeing like all the different kinds of art because it wasn't just like fan art there was lots of people making like the original stuff a lot of people who were selling um like earrings and jewelry yeah. i really liked those um and yeah, just like kind of like offhandedly like meeting people and being like, oh, I like this stuff. This stuff is so cool. Mm. <laughs> All that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, setting setting up was like the daunting part because like it was like for me, it was like my first time setting up like an actual look because uh, my friend um, who had been doing it for a while, um, uh, her name's Haley. And she, she's been doing it for a couple of years. So she was like, you know, it's okay. It's okay if it's not perfect. Um, she was like, oh, you know, like prepare like your setup, you know, like find out like a look that you like. And I was like, I'll find out on the day. Don't mm. do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was hard. I think, um, cause it, I think there's like a lot of mistakes that I made, which are good because mistakes are good because then you learn from them. Yeah. Of course. Um, but yeah, like the first, but like Saturday was kind of like, a test run for that sort of thing to see what worked and then Sunday was a lot better because like we managed to like scrounge up some more materials because yeah. um we went to see like a friend's uh like musical performance <laughs> on Friday as well so we were busy mm. yeah so <laughs> but yeah to answer your question I was there before yeah no that's fair no that that I mean obviously <laughs> it makes sense like I've got a friend of a friend who works there and he's there every year and to my uh, to the best of my ability i cannot remember what the hell he sells i just when we see him it's like <laughs> hey it's that guy and, and he's like hey you're you're this person's friend hey, and the thing hey was, you that that friend of ours wasn't even there she was at a different convention which was a whole book <laughs> convention in like the opposite side of the city so she wasn't even able to go um but like we still went and saw the guy we're like hey it's that guy you know and we still mm. had a chat and you know 
it's 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 fun because he also he was always talking about like his experience working there and how he prefers this thing than last year or how this was better this time and like you know it's just mm. oh, it's usually just small talk stuff but it's like it's still nice to get a perspective rather than you just being there and being like oh am I gonna buy from this guy it's like I don't have to you know yeah, yeah so totally as yeah as someone who goes there every year it's like yeah Artist Alley is like the best and worst place because it's like the best place because there's so <laughs> much creativity there's so many people who have so much stuff and then it's like also oh my god all these people want to sell me their stuff and I'm just like I don't know if I want to be around this but it's yeah good. no, I, the, I, I love it you know yeah yeah I think that like um because there's obviously that part so I know that the the idea of doing like Artist Alleys is to one get like kind of get exposure but mainly to make money yeah um and it's like and it feels kind of bad like i feel bad for like i'm like i feel bad for wanting to sell you things um (laughs) but i think that like it's honestly a great time like just talking to people as well like i um like i said before um i make i've made like a lot of um uh i made like some charms for a band called ghost um who i'm seeing next week and i'm going i'm Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm fangirling. No, yeah, but they, but like when I was making all the fan art for, or like when I was making like stock, essentially, um, mm. in my mind I was thinking, well, I don't want to make anything super popular because if I do, like I'm competing against people who know what they're doing. Like they, like there's like an anime or or like a manga that I was like, oh, it would be cool to make stuff like this, but I'm like, it, so many people would have made it. Yeah. And so I was like, I'll make stuff I really, really like and just hope and pray that people like it too. Mm. Um, and that was Ghost. And people, like, I sold out of nearly all of my charms. Nice. And uh, people bought, like, the prints, and I was like, oh, my God. But it was really great to meet people who had more of a niche, in- like, more niche interests, because that was mm. another thing that my friend Haley said. She said, you know, like, if you make stuff that's niche, um, you're not competing against people who... Uh, making a lot of the popular stuff and they know what they're doing yeah. so if you really like something specifically like um you you met my friend um alex bimphy yeah the one who uh, made lots of lots of the breads all the bread stuff yeah all the bread stuff yeah. uh sh- shout out to bimphy no but she <laughs> she loves bread and it's like very and she was like oh you know like i'll make stuff from like my final film or like i'll do this and that and then it was like lots of monster high because she just likes monster high as well yeah um and like yeah people really liked her bread stuff and yeah. like they were interested in her as an artist as well which is really that's like the best part it's like even if people don't buy anything like they just they could just talk and like get to know you as a person yeah. and the yeah like the the spirit of supernova is that it's lots of people who really love just like are really passionate about stuff that they like and when they meet other people who like it it's great and so yeah there's like lots of people who i talked to who you know they didn't buy you know i was like thinking i'm like oh i wish you would buy this but like it was also just nice to talk to them and i I think about them in my head i'm like oh i love that like that like there was a mama who i met um who was like oh you know uh, who had like her son with her and she was like oh like tell tell like the nice lady like your favorite ghost song and I was like oh this is so cute I'm loving this <laughs> you know yeah and so like selling stuff is kind of like second was like um it was a nice touch as well yeah. but like getting to meet people who were like oh I'm gonna follow you after this I'm like oh god <laughs> hey <laughs> yeah I'm being perceived <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh, like that yeah. co- that common uh, thing with I see with artists where it's like every, like they happen to blow up with this one particular thing, and a lot of people go and follow them, and it's like, oh, you guys know me from this. Now you can see all the weird shit I like. You know? <laughs> yeah, so. that's that's what happened with my medieval stuff. So I like yeah, like that mm, was like yeah, that was like an uh oh, uh hey guys, I do <laughs> other things too. Yeah. Please like me. But yeah, so let's talk about. I guess, I guess we'll go into what got you into art and then we can go into the styles of stuff that you do to give some context so what what introduced you to this art thing that i keep hearing about (laughs) oh you know you shouldn't get into it it's it's some bad business no um (laughs) like 
Oh, okay. Like, I feel like it's kind of um, stereotypical to be like, I, when I was a young baby, I picked up a pen. No, but like, <laughs> I it was genuinely like, I, it was kind of like a weird compulsion for me, like, I think, because like, I really, I really did just like drawing a lot. And I think um, when I was like a little kid, like, I, I was very, I was very imaginative. So like, I would, if there was like a drawing uh exercise in like you know kinder or or like you know prep or something else like oh good i know what this is i can do this like i i already kind of ingrained it it was like this is the thing that i do um this is the thing that i like doing and it kind of kept happening throughout the years and like um like i was and i just kind kind of became like known as like oh that's the art kid mm. um and yeah, and like you know, I was like, oh, yay! That's that's who I am. That's the that's my, that's what I offer society mm. as a person. I'm thinking of that at like eight years old, and I'm like, oh, geez. Um, <laughs> well, you but... start existentialism sometime. <laughs> exactly, start young. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I I kind of like saw it, like I was like I loved doing it. I loved um like fantasy art specifically, and I think that's was like a huge inspiration for me. Um. Uh, like you know the dragonology books, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. you you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. My, my my brother, <laughs> older brother, the same thing. He loved drawing like like medieval characters and dragons and shit. And we had all mm, those books mm. at home. Yeah, yeah. Like I I think I was I was always like kind of fascinated by history as well, specifically because like I think about like the medieval time, like medieval period, and like I'd be like. Oh, and then there's what they had the dragons, but like you know, I I kind of ingrained very early on that like art was always like part of history, and the and like you know when I uh, when when all when all good kids go through their Egypt phase, mm. I loved like I, I think I just like very was very connected to um the fact that art was always such a uh like su- such an important part of culture as well, yeah. um, but then like. Like that's like that's like me getting into art. That's me being like, I really like art. I really like drawing. It's like the thing that I feel like I'm good at. Yeah. Um, because I, I mean, I wasn't like specifically. I wasn't very sporty. I wasn't very like. I wasn't like. I wasn't. I'm not saying I'm not smart, <laughs> but I wasn't. But I wasn't very. I wasn't very into like that sort of thing. I was like, I love history. I love drawing funny little animals, and you know that was it. Like that was like my big create like that was like where i felt at home yeah um and then and then i got introduced to anime and then that's where like things just took a bit of a funny turn Mm, then it always does um but that was like me going oh like these like are cool looking people and like my parents um no disrespect like they 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 understand but like at the time they're like we don't want you to watch pokemon because it seems stupid i'm like but but it's anime that's my that's anime to me i want to watch anime and mm. um then i watched anime uh and then that i think like really kind of put me in the direction of drawing people as well like that's kind of like where i learned to draw people um and so i'd be drawing it in like year six and people be like oh who's this and i'm like oh this is an oc and it's like an, an angel anime girl and like she's like crying or something like she's got like little like a tear going down her face and i think yeah. like that was kind of um that's kind of like where i was like oh i really love drawing like i love drawing i love drawing um but i think kind of where um it kind of stopped was when i was in high school and i started to think oh no i feel like this is the only thing people know me for um being the art kid and i kind of like pushed against it and i really wanted to be more involved in film yeah um which is kind of like where like i kind of became more connected to media studies and like my teacher our teacher Mm. emma shout out to emma um (laughs) (laughs) first uh, ever interview subject i noticed that i saw that i was like um but like (laughs) i felt very connected and like a lot of my other friends who i'd kind of made um they were all into film Mm. And so I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. And, you know, I can, I can do storyboarding. Like I like storyboarding. Like I can, I can just do that. Cause again, mm. it's like art is like a compulsion. I'm like, that's what I'm good at, but I want to be good at 
uh, film. And so I kind of rejected the artist a little bit. Like, I was like, I can do commissions. I can, you know, I got into D&D. And I was like, I can draw people's characters, but I don't want to be an artist. I want to be like, you know, I want to be somebody who works in film. Mm. And then I did two years of film and I didn't like it. So mm. yeah. I had like a, I, yeah. So I yeah. had like a mild, um, I had like not like a mild like crisis where I was like, I need to figure out something else. Like, I think I just need to stop rejecting it and kind of go with it. And so that's yeah. where I kind of looked at animation because it was like merging the two things I thought were really important to me, which was like storytelling and art. And I got to do both or like I could got to focus on one or the other because it's such a uh, big, like there's so many roles in art and sorry, roles in animation um, where I got to just find out what I liked. Yeah. And so after rejecting it for a couple of years, I just went fully back into it and now with doing cons and like the wood burning sort of thing, I'm now just kind of enjoying making stuff yeah. um, rather than like feeling like, oh, this is what I'm good at. It's kind of more like, well, if I feel like I'm good at it, then I can do more things. I can do more fun things. And I'm more inspired by people as well because I got to meet more people. All right. I guess we'll talk about what different types of art you produce yeah right why not uh, know, different styles the digital art the wooden art all that jazz yeah like different mediums yeah. um well yeah i i predominantly do digital art mainly because it's just so much more convenient and you know despite like you know having to like buy the equipment to use it um it's just kind of a lot cheaper in the long run and i also like I love traditional art so much. I feel like it just has, like, such a nice quality to it. Because mm. um, I've been thinking a little bit more about, like, the way, like, different kind of styles of paper and sort of thing. But um, I've just found it's just so much easier to do digital art. And I can just, like, whip out my tablet. Um, like, like, I use, like, an iPad for, like, a lot of my stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. And that was, like, my main source of, like, how I made art and how I did like how I did animation as well. Um, but the wood stuff is um, kind of more of a step into the realm of almost traditional art in a way. Yeah. Um, I started, like, I I noticed, like, I started getting, like, more stuff on my uh, Instagram page um, from different artists and, like, they were using this, like, really interesting-looking wood-burning machine and, like, the way that, like, it kind of reminded me a lot of like uh wooden etching art from like medieval like like Dura sketches mm. um that was kind of like uh that was like quite that was it was almost like I got really into medieval art and then I saw that and I was like oh this makes me think of like wood etchings and I love wood etchings and that's kind of like you know inspired me a little bit I kind of do um lines a little bit more graphically now because of it mm. And so it's like, oh, it's like that, but it's like being burnt onto slices of wood and it's really cool and it has this like really rustic effect and I was like quite drawn to it. Um, so I went out to Bunnings and I bought like uh, the least shittiest um, like wood burning pen I could and I tested it out on some like little pine slices and it was really tricky at first. I was like, I had no idea how to use like the nibs because I, I changed machines quite uh, quite quickly because I realized um, it would just be better for my hand because the the Bunnings one was like really hard to hold mm. and I, I was like oh this this hurts and kind of sucks but like the end product is like you look at it and it's like oh I made this it's one of a kind even if I um, like I'll, I'll get into it later but um, I would use these like I would have them and, and just be like oh this is like a piece entirely unique to this object which I haven't had before because digital art is like you can print it you can get it made like you can get like the charms made yeah even like the enamel pin like that can just be manufactured again but this is like so specific and when you make a mistake you have to work with it yeah um which I thought was like that's really cool it's kind of like you have to you know work around things that you don't think like look right or like you learn how to um either not make those mistakes again or like or like how to cover them up and so I ended up buying like 
an actual machine from the US and it was it was it cost a little bit but mm. I was thinking like I was like this would probably feel so much better because the pen I was using uh was like a solid tip right and so it would take ages to burn up it would hurt my hand because of how like unwieldy it was yeah and I had no idea how hot it was I could do I couldn't see like uh like the because with the wire tip it glows red and I'm like red equal hot my caveman yeah. brain understands that <laughs> um but yeah but I was like despite the despite kind of the pain I really liked doing it and I got to I got to just like whip it out and just be like oh hey I burnt this and I get to show people and they go oh what this thing and they I can see like they always like feel the grooves mm. which is kind of something I started like picking up from other artists like this like way of like filling it in and kind of like seeing it kind of change in the light. It was like a, it's like a three D object, um, like a two D drawing, but like you get to actually kind of like feel it. Yeah. The texture you can see like the the way that uh, the workmanship, um, which I was like, that's so cool. I didn't realize like how interesting that is to actually have and like own. And a lot of people smell it for some reason. I don't know why. Um, wood smells. I don't know. Does it smell like smell burning? Th- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like taking a whiff, and I'm like, "That is varnish." Stop smelling that. <laughs> I don't smell it. I um, don't know. Maybe that's yeah. the best part. Yeah, <laughs> that's what makes the art even better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um. So yeah, like it was like kind of in it. It was in line of things I liked doing because I kind of I was drawing a lot of like stuff from like um like a D and D campaign I was a part of, and then that ended quite abruptly. And so I was like, I don't really have much else to draw. And so that's kind of when Supernova and then subsequently the wood burning thing kind of came in because it was like, oh, I can just burn like a flower or I can just like draw this like bug or, you know, I got to just, I got to look at other things, yeah, other, other things. And like, I was really enjoying it. I liked just drawing for the sake of drawing and not being like, oh, I'm making art for like this thing that is no longer happening. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, what was I going to say? You know, it costs, like, the um, the machine, like, it costs a bit, but, like, it just works. It's just, like, everything, it just, it's like butter. It melts through it. Um, it reminded me of, um, like, woodworking class, actually, in um, in high school, where we had, like, a, like, kind of, like, a old one, and, like, nobody told you, like, how to use it. Mm. So you'd, like, start burning, and you immediately just go through, like, it would just, be so deep and you'd scorch the wood immediately. Yeah. But I still liked it. It kind of reminded me of that. So I was like, oh, blast from the past. <laughs> Some interesting nostalgia, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Yeah, it's 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 interesting thinking of art that way. Because, like, I, I have, like, I feel like I have the opposite thing where it's like, I don't do that much in terms of art, but I've, like, looked at what I've done in terms of, like, paintings and stuff. And, like, mm. it's like, it is a nightmare to do this stuff because it's like, ah, you want it to go one way, it goes the other, and it's like, that's it. That's just how it is. Yeah. What oh, no. Heck? Trusting the process is genuinely, yeah. like, people say it, but you, but, like, you have to do it because. Yeah. You have to work through a lot of the um the things that kind of stress you out. Like seeing it like half done, like um especially with with um painting, like mm. that's something I I I still haven't conquered and I'm like I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. Um but yeah, like it's in like seeing how people overcome it or like you think something's like oh, you need to like blend it out, you need to make it smooth. No, you don't. You don't yeah. have to do anything. It can yeah. be like the way you think works best um but yeah no that's it's it's a mindset that is that takes time to develop i think yeah yeah no uh, yeah that's why i kind of think i prefer filmmaking it's so much easier to just sit a camera there do a thingy be like mm, mm-hmm. let's try it a bit differently at least i've got like infinite ammo here because i got a whole sd card so yeah much totally to work with yeah and then it's just it's saved in the edit for, for most of the parts like i can edit this yeah. way but still yeah no editing is like such a that's also so creative as well because mm. everything everything that you can work with is within the camera yeah um it's, but like you know you put you can put so much thought into the way that something is set up uh like the blocking the dialogue the way that people um take like the i like your idea and um sorry i'm like i've lost my train of thought 
this yeah, happens. How, how they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, how they work and evolve with it. Yeah, and then they're able exactly. To like, oh, I can change this to make it look like this and feel like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't have the brain of an editor because I, I go, oh, ha, huh, I don't know how to change. I don't like change. I don't get it. But like, I know some people who can just be like, oh, this isn't working this way. Hold on, let me just. And then they just like flip two shots around. I go, how did you do that? Yeah, I, I, I'm obviously not as proficient an editor, but having done a lot of, obviously, video editing for myself for the past six, seven years now, it's like, it, it is, I always think about, like, the process of setting something up, like, obviously, like, with this interview, like, I've got Zoom mm. recording two different audio streams, I've got recording from my own mic, I've got a camera recording me just in case, plus the camera from my Mac, like, I've got all this set up, and it's just going to be two pictures of us audio and then stuff that you've made shown on screen i'm like i know exactly yeah. what the end product's going to look like but i'm just making sure that if i want to i've got all my yeah to, you've got you know, so many you've got you've got options you've got yeah. options yeah so it's it's a it's 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 fun i guess this is art i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean I, yeah i think <laughs> my art form mm, my art form is getting uh, people to talk about themselves for two hours yes oh i love doing <laughs> no i do too it's uh, fun. i like listening yeah it's good yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It, it's fun to talk about these things because it's like, um, actual like the question about like, oh, you know, like what inspired you? Like, how did you start? I just go, uh, mm. I don't know. I just do it. But like, I get to think about things along the way, and it's also like a nice back and forth as well because we're both creatives. Ah, oh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, in terms of like. You know, because obviously a lot of the stuff that you've been inspired by that you've made has been based on stuff that you've seen through, like, again, anime and other art forms and then seeing from suggestions from Instagram. But do you have any particular artists that you actually, like, I love this person's work, I love their style, I, I want to do my own kind of thing based on that and, like, learn and adapt from there? Yeah, Um. I mean, like, there's there's definitely, like, a lot of artists from that are kind of like more like famous artists that I can think of. Um, like ones that I think like kind of speak to me in a way where I, it's not necessarily, I want to be like them because mm. there are artists who I, I think about like that. I go, Oh, I want to do what they do. Um, but like, I've always kind of been like attracted to like Monet as well. I feel like, so, I feel like a dickhead. <laughs> no, but like, I've always loved the imagery or like kind of like the, the, idea that it doesn't have to be like a perfect image where it's not super rendered or something like that but like a very like blocky kind of dreamlike mm. i love things that kind of feel like memories when you look at them mm. um and i think a lot of inspiration i have um when i do when i do kind of stuff kind of more similar to that like um like digital art where i draw like um like kind of backgrounds for animation and stuff like i really love like kind of blocky kind of dreamy look like no matter what it is because I feel like it always looks good because yeah. it always it's always like the like impression of like what it's meant to be um and it's not hyper like hype like super super um realistic yeah uh like in terms of artists who I'm like oh my god I want to be you want to wear your skin <laughs> um <laughs> there's like there's a couple I think this one specifically I have, who I think kind of like inspired me and i'm trying to veer away i don't want to be too much like them because i'm like i don't i don't want to be like you uh i don't want to seem like i'm copying um mm. is someone called like alter go art um on uh on instagram their wood burning stuff is what got me into it and then uh who they follow kind of got me like further into that community and it's such an interesting thing because it's a very american hobby because yeah for a lot of them they just buy like they've like their their idea of like the best kind of wood is like an american kind so i buy that um and it works it definitely is like amazing to use but it's like a very like american community and so like a lot of the stuff that they do is like very specific to them like a lot of them do like hairs or a lot of them do um like like american animals yeah which I'm like, I love those because, like, that's kind of like, you know, growing up and doing that sort of thing. But I'd love to experiment with, like, uh, Australian, like, I'd love to do, like, eucalyptus. Yeah. As well. Like, I just can't find it. Um, <laughs> but, oh, Pretty man. Sure there's some out the backyard, but yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, where do I get it? I'm standing right next to one. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, like in terms of um artists, there's just like I love artists that um can do just like a variety of mediums as well. Like I think it's like quite a vague I I know it's like quite vague, but like um people who can make enamel pins, like yeah. that's an art form in on its own. And that's kind of something I've had to learn how to how to do because there's like a way to kind of like make things small enough but they're legible yeah um i always get it drawn to people who can do that really well um and then oh the actually i'm literally looking at like pictures on the wall because i've got like lots of prints i've started collecting prints because it's nice yeah, um it there's is. one specifically um called anna laura art i don't know if you've seen their work but they draw like these like um two like like they're kind of characters like a little monkey okay um and they draw like these like kind of like really kind of sappy little comics um but they always feel like again it's like kind of like dream like it's kind of like it feels nostalgic it feels like kind of like looking at um a memory and uh, every time like they post i get like a little teary eyed i'm like oh my god is it anna it's or so like a n a l o r a um anna so a double n a a Oh, sorry, um, L A U R A. Oh, so like genuinely just Anna Laura. Oh, yeah, there we go. Anna Laura, yeah. Oh, yeah, the little monkey, I see it now. Little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't, like, I don't go, oh, I want to be them so bad, but like, it speaks to me in a way where I'm like, this is like kind of what art is about. Like, just yeah. making stuff that you feel like speaks to you. And for like Monet, it was like painting, like, painting landscapes and like you know sometimes having like a portrait of like a figure mm. and for yeah and for like the little monkeys it's like telling like a little mini story or like kind of you know expressing like a almost like a nostalgic yeah thing yeah no, um, that. Yeah. yeah and then there's probably so many i can like list off the top of my head but like i can't that's do it right, right now <laughs> at least from like current things this is what's currently inspiring your area yeah, of work it's a, yeah it's always like kind of like always changing i think yeah yeah oh definitely yeah it's the best part about it it's constantly mm. changing like like even me like oh i don't mm, how do i make this about myself <laughs> that's not egotistical uh no i was just thinking i was like of all the movies <laughs> i watch you know the art oh, yeah. i consume and how that's constantly changing like i'm always watching a different thing every day like, even I'm doing Hooptober right now, which is, like, a horror film every day, and, like, every mm. single film has been completely different from the last, even the ones that are done by the same person, so... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's really fun. cool, and, like, people, like, consume films way more than they consume art, I think, or, like, intentionally. Or... Yeah, I was gonna say, it's like, like, I mean, film is art, but yes, but no, I know what you oh, mean, yes. it's like... No, yeah. You, sorry, yeah. like, when I say art, I think I'm, I, I'm thinking more, like, picture yeah, like painting and stuff and like they're like oh i'm going to go out to the gallery and see these paintings or i could stay inside and watch all these movies about blood and gore yeah it's still art, both it's, yeah. art. they're yeah. both art like there's both... plenty of like <laughs> there's like a painting in um the ngv that i love pointing out to people because it's in like that huge huge room with like tons of like little paintings on the wall like huge ones um there's like ones on like the right hand side where it's like um like a female figure and she's like looking like demure and like ooh, and people and i'm like so this is the fun wall and then if you look over here there's a there's a mother of a lamb crying because her lamb is dead and she's surrounded by ravens and that's the sad wall <laughs> I, fun so, yeah so they go wow and i'm like it's called anguish yeah. I feel it when I look at it. But, I mean, <laughs> even, like, I love horror films because I feel like they also get so creative as well. Oh, yeah. And it's such a, it's such a like, dense medium as well. Like, it's not just, like, spooky horror. Like, I know um, I know they made a new Saw. My my yes. friends have seen it. And I'm like, oh, I'm I'm a bit squeaked out by mm. gore. But I, but I still appreciate it because, you know. Yeah, it, for me. You know, RMIT yeah. alumni made the first one, so... Yes, true. Yeah, I, I haven't seen any of them, but I have, like, all of them on Blu-ray because I got them as a box set recently, and I'm like, oh, I got to watch them. But I'm like, I hate torture porn, so it's like using gore yeah. for, like, the enjoyment of seeing someone go through pain. I'm like, I don't like that, but I'll watch Evil Dead 2 where it looks like he's having fun, even though he's yeah. clearly not. Like, it's like, 
there's different styles of how the it's, gore it's like is camp yeah yeah the campy aspects like i love that but it's like oh torture porn is not great like i'm going for a little mm. bit for hoop turbo and holy shit i don't like it yeah uh, no totally no it's and it's different. like it's not for everyone yeah exactly that sort of thing Still got a lot of um, Saw films though. Oh god. <laughs> I, I have I have like I know the first Saw film is genuinely very good. Like I've heard the, good things the, the... about all of them, depending on who you ask. It's like oh, oh the yeah. first one's a masterpiece, the rest are crap. It's like I don't know, I've heard some people say that the first one's boring, but the rest of them are really fun. So it's like I I think the fact that the, f- the I think the fact that people think the first one's boring kind of means it's like it's good. I mean it's two guys mm. locked in like like chained in a room. And yeah. that's quite fun. And a lot of the um like the editing is so over the top, but I really like it. I love I love the um the time period where horror films were green. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, that early two thousands. Yeah, that when they first invented color grading. It's like, what if yes! it all looks like this one color? Like not like internal stuff where it's like Suspiria, where it's different colors and it's all spotlights yeah. and shit. It's like, no, we're just gonna put the whole image and just <laughs> contrast it to green. Who We're cares gonna just about like how black it looks and how yuck out looks? It's like it'll work. It's a style. It's a vibe. It's style. It's a vibe. Yeah, I, yeah. I, st- I still love it. <laughs> like I know, yeah. I know it's like, like I know, like the case of Suspiria where it's like, it's gorgeous. Like mm. so much love and thought went into like the the costume design, like the prop design. Like that is such a big part of film that I feel like kind of gets gets like kind of it's a little goes over a couple of people's heads yeah it gets buried but... underneath the actors and the pretty people you see getting kissy and murdery and stuff like that yeah mm, exactly yeah it's, it's like, like those are fun yeah no i no i get you I, like because i have like director collections i'm like oh i treasure this director and that director and my mom will be like i just want to watch this movie where the fuck is it and i'm like it's there <laughs> it's just in that person's director suite because you know i appreciate the artists and the people who make it you know so mm, mm. Well, it's like like film is like such a team effort as well. And I think like it kind of gets a little bit, uh, kind of like get accidentally gets a little ignored. And mm. I'm like, it makes it makes me a little sad. But I also know, but I'm also kind of hoping that like the rise of films where production value is like the biggest part. I hope yeah. that people kind of like start noticing. It. Like the one I'm literally thinking of. I like how I was thinking of Saw before, and now I'm like. You know, Barbie looked great. <laughs> yeah, no, it did. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, it's all that, Barbie. That's 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 no, that's a good example because I was thinking with with the spirits, like it, you can have all the different elements of like, oh yeah, it, it's like lights are here and that's it. Like how a lot of people with their current films are trying to replicate the '80s style, and it's like, oh, it's gonna yeah. look like this and look like that. It's like, yeah, but the '80s style benefits from a the directors of the time and b the fact that they've shot it on film. Like, yes, Suspiria yeah. looks like it does because it's the last Technicolor film. Like, that's got a particular film strip, a particular style that just amplifies all of it. And then it's added with this, oh yeah, it's also Jalo and it's like camp and shit, and it's also like witches and stuff, and it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. It's and like... mishmash. Yeah. Yeah, like there's lots of like little things that, like choices that were made um, make it, like make it what it is and like when people go like, oh, this actually does feel like have that 80s vibe, it's not because they slapped a synth score over it. Mm. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be a hater. I hate I hate when like people like deliberately go, it's like, it's the 80s. This is an 80s time. I'm like, it just makes me mad. Yeah, it's, it's just like, <laughs> makes here's me all rage. the stuff that's like stereotypical 80s stuff. I'm like, look, the synth score's are only good if it's John Carpenter. Go away. You know, it's like... Yeah, get him to yeah. do it. And that was because it was cheap. He had the synthesizer, he had the piano keyboard thing. It's like, I can just do it myself. And then there, exactly. there you go. There's music, easy peasy. That yeah, cuts your budget like it, in half. Yeah. Yeah, but, that, but now it's like, oh, it's like, it has to sound like the 80s. And mm. I'm like... <laughs> makes me like slam my fists on the table I'm like Rah! yeah yeah like a mass produced field where it's like less artistic intent and more just oh replication to the nth degree i'm like i'm sorry yeah. in stranger things do any of them have aids <laughs> i don't think so you know <laughs> <laughs> i know they're children but at the same time they're also 30 year olds pretending to be children oh my god <laughs> see that's that's, um, that's what i think about when i think about stranger things not you're, you're like where's Where's the AIDS crisis? Where's where's the actual horror? You know, yeah. Nah, it's just Soviet uh, stuff. Ugh. You know. Oh, uh, lame. Yeah, yada yada. <laughs> we know about the Cold War. Come I've, on. I've seen I've seen Hunt for Red October. I don't need any more of that commie shit. 
<laughs> oh man, sorry. That just also reminded me of like Mad Men as well. I like Mad Men. Mad Men's good. Yeah. Mad Men is good, but Mad Men I think really benefits. I I guess it's also like, um, because it's not the eighties. I'm not gonna have a little tantrum, mm. but the the production value on that is just it perfectly like, recaptures its style. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And like yeah. the costume changes and like even like the like the fact that they change locations in um like just the way that they dress people, the way that um they interact with events. Yeah. Like the way that they treat like JFK's assassination as though it's like the nine eleven of the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's an authenticity to it that yeah. Feels legit. Yeah. Like yeah. there's lots of love went into like making it feel kinda of, like like not necessarily like oh it's so accurate like but it i'm like oh yeah no it feels like the time period like i'm not thinking like in stranger things where i'm going oh they put metallic in here <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, complaining that's... about just complaining about stranger things <laughs> like yeah i can do that all day <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh uh. Let's let's but get yeah. back to talking about you. Let's not talk about Stranger Things. Oh, at all. <laughs> oh no! St- even Stranger Things. Uh, um, even Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's 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 capitalize. Where where do you sell? What do you do with that? The money making business of this. Do you, do you get money from from your art? Uh, I do, sir. I've been taking commissions for a very very long time, and like even before I actually used currency, so. When I was in DeviantArt, because of, of course I was, <laughs> um, I'm not going to say what my name is on no, there. Um, the <laughs> people have found out anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, but like, pe- but like, I've taken point. Like, they had this like weird currency where it's like pay real money for this fake money that you can trade in for other things. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I did that, but I did mine. Like, it was so dirt cheap. It wasn't even worth doing because I was like, oh, five points for like a full body like. A uh, fully colored character, mm. and um, and that is like the equivalent of like twenty US cents. Oh no, um. twenty like twenty AU cents, and I was like, oh, like mm. I don't want to charge any more than that, and I was, <laughs> I don't know why, but um, I then I started taking commissions, um, kind of like when I was like in my teenage period as well, and so it's kind of just been like a thing where people just go, oh, can I pay you to draw something, and I go sure why not and it's kind of battling that um battling that kind of problem i think all artists have which is like how do you sell yourself and how how do you charge yeah like what how do you charge like and that was something with supernova as well which was like a bit difficult um because it's always this like little voice in the back of your head saying that's too much money no one's gonna buy that yeah um and it's sad because it's like oh man like i I want to be able to make like money off of this because I've spent so long perfecting this craft and I really do care about what I make. Um, so I, I started doing like, I think my most popular form of like, like my, my biggest way of making money has been through commissions. Like people pay me to draw like their D and D characters yeah. um, or like, like pictures of like them and their partner like i have like people from um high school who still like say like oh freya do you still do that and i go i sure do um (laughs) (laughs) but like this was like the first year where i made quite a lot of money um off of it but like commissions are kind of like a thing that i've been doing kind of consistently and i've been able to like figure out the pricing as well um over time and and something that you learn is like you if if you get worried about like whether or not people will buy something for like that amount i've had people go oh um like i want to buy this but it's too expensive and i go that sucks but that's okay like i don't feel bad i like i don't feel like bad for charging the amount that i want to charge for it because i've you know yeah. i've spent time on it and it costs that much because i put that much work into it um and also it costs that much because if they want things changed which i always encourage that i always encourage like hey tell me if you don't like it and that's another thing it's like fighting off where it's like oh if they don't like it immediately i'm a bad artist it's like Mm. no yeah it's just things are wrong slightly and that's okay um but i have had people who like 
have consistently like commissioned me or like bought things from me and I'm like oh god and like people who I know who have like always kind of supported my art as well um but yeah I, I opened like an Etsy page and that's kind of like where I'm in selling some stuff I sell like my pins on there I'm going to start selling my wood burning stuff on there just once I amass enough to kind of like sell off yeah and those would be those would be expensive as well which is like a really difficult thing to fight because I'm like I don't want to charge that much because I'm just beginning but for, for that makes, like it makes more sense though it, like in my mind it's, yeah. like, it's like doing a big like painting this is a thing it's authentic it's it's a one of, the, of its kind you know exactly so, yeah you know, I've put in hours of effort here's three hundred dollars yeah yeah no totally and it's like yeah the and like what you just said and what I said earlier which was like the wood burning stuff is like one of a kind like mm. even if I because I for some of my pieces I print out like a design like I draw the design initially. Yeah. And then I put it on, um, and then I just, like, I transfer it, like, I, like, trace it on, and then I work from that. Yeah. It's still unique to that yeah. piece. Um, so it's still, it's still gonna, like, be expensive. And that's why I kind of started making, like, prints off of the, um, off of my wood burning stuff. So then that way I'm like, well, I'll have it always. Like, I'll always have, like, a version of it. Yeah. That I think is cool. But then somebody else can have it in their home. Oh, wow! But yeah, so <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's good. I, I I think that that works. I mean, if it if it makes the money, but also is like, yeah, has an authenticity, has a sense of purpose to it. Yeah, then it's it's good. Mm. And I can I can understand the whole idea of you know people being like, oh, I've just done this digital thing. Does it work? Do they not like? It? Will they want to change and stuff like that? Like, I've had that before. I had a film I did back in uni where I needed an animated character and my friend happened to, who I was working on the f film with, he knew a person, so we commissioned, mm -hmm. like, these animated characters. They were all, like, pixel art, and she made, like, six of them, and I was like, okay, I want that one with different postures and all the different movements. I'll take the rest of them as well and put them as, like, background characters, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm not, like, completely, like, not using any of her work. But, uh, yeah, that was, like, it still looked amateurish in how I presented in the film, but that was also kind of the point. So it's like I paid for what I needed, and I really liked the work, and I still used it. Obviously still mm -hmm. credited and everything. But, yeah, I have haven't done any commissions since, but it's like it's, <laughs> it was a good experience, you know? So, yeah, you know, yeah. Money and, well spent. like, talking. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Like, talking to people and... um. I've always been the commission me, I guess. Mm. I don't know. I've always been the person who's been asked to draw stuff. So, like, being on the other side is always kind of an interesting uh, idea, like, um, and, like, asking for things to be changed and then, um, like, the way that you use the work as well and, like, what you do with it once it's done because it's an image. Like, yeah. or in your case, it's an animation and it was made for your film. Yeah. Um. And yeah, no, I, I always think it's quite cool, quite cool even to be, be a part of something that's a little bit far away from you. Like yeah. I, um, my, one of my first jobs after I finished uni was, um, I worked with a, uh, like a post-production house and they asked me to animate something for like a Toyota cricket ad. And, and that was like my big, like, oh shit. Mm, oh that's my a God. <laughs> I'm I like, that ah. yeah. yeah, I said two words and people go, oh, I could put that one together. Um, yeah. And yeah, just like now, and now like I have that. And sometimes I forget about it. I forget I've done it. And so people go, oh, you did that? You did this thing? And I go, oh, yeah. Mm. Forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like commission, commission wise, it's a very interesting process because you kind of, you're always fighting off like the imposter syndrome that comes with it. Yeah. Um, and just being an artist, because like a lot of the time you're kind of treated a little bit, a little shitty by people who just go like, not not in terms of not like people commission you, but like in general where it's like animation or art isn't a real job. Yeah. But then you're around other creatives and you're like, okay, you guys aren't like that. I know, but I'm scared. Mm. Yeah. No. I I've been that. traumatized. Yeah. No, I get that with like making my videos. I'm like, oh, they're just stupid YouTube videos. I'm like, yeah, but. 
I'm putting time and effort into it. People will actually like it. And I'm like, that's insane. Like, I just, yeah. as you know, I just got over a thousand subscribers. I'm like, I can now be monetized. And yeah. I'm like, I'm going to make a video talking about how there's going to be ads on my videos now because I'm concerned that <laughs> no. people are not going to like that. No, well so, done. Well done. Yeah. Like, that's no easy feat. Like, yeah, it's taken me seven years to figure out what exactly people like to watch and what I like <laughs> to make. And it's like, it's just talking about Blu-rays. It's easy. Yeah. It's good. I like, like throw, it. It's like throwing it, throwing whatever you can at the wall. Like, I, I had that with um Instagram. Like, I had to remake my account because I don't want to say just in case they're listening. <laughs> um, But I don't know why, basically. But, like, when I made, like, uh, like a, my first ever reel and I got lots of people paying attention to me, I'm like, oh, okay. So if I keep doing this, you'll like me. You'll mm. you'll like me. Please like me. Um, no, but yeah, I, I can see what you mean by like being worried that like people are gonna think you're a sellout, even though it's like no, you've just yeah. surpassed you, you. You should make money off of this. Like yeah, your hard <laughs> yeah. your hard work. You've paid money for this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's not a real job. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. For me, it's still for me, it's still just a hobby. It's just, I mean, I do it every bloody week, and it's like, it's not really a hobby. I don't make money from it, but it's like, yeah, but I make money doing other stuff. I have a regular day yeah. job. I have a filming job, so I'm still doing stuff that's, you know, yeah, helping totally. to it's... finance my interests. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that's like such a, like a good point as well. It's like I think as like w another thing is like. Mm, people trying to also like monetize like their job like i i would love to be like a full-time artist but i just know like that's not really in the cards for me and that's okay because i think i would get upset <laughs> i mm. i think i'd be like too overwhelmed and i wouldn't i wouldn't enjoy it because then i'd have to be, um i'd have to just be constantly doing stuff yeah. and that's exhausting especially yeah. if it's like something that you like and you feel compelled to do yeah, now you get to do it at your own leisure, and it's like, cool, and here's the end reward. It's an art piece, and people really like it, and they buy it. Or, you know, they yeah. just look at it and say, that looks pretty. Bye. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, and, yeah. and that's nice. Like, I love I love when people compliment my things. Like, I go, yay, that's, yeah. this, that's the equivalent of, like, paying, like, like, mind money for me. Yeah, no, I get that with the odd YouTube comment that is like, I, I love your videos, you're my favourite physical media channel. I'm like, oh my god, I'm a favourite of someone? That's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it's you like, know. I'm a real person. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah, become the Patrick really Stewart good. of... It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> become Patrick Stewart. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I am losing my hair, so yeah, sure. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> oh no! Well, look, he never had purple hair, so I think I think you're doing a bit better. Yeah, no, that wasn't fun. That see, that was my creative choice. I even had a colleague recently when I came to work, and he's like, "So what's it from?" I'm like, "I'm like the salon," and he's like, "No, like, is it from a character?" I'm like, "Why would it be from a character?" He's like, "I don't know, because you're gonna dress up." I'm like, "No, it's it's at this stage. Just you it was September. To. It's like it's not even Halloween yet. Like, I'm not. It's not for a character. I just wanted to have fun." And realized I can just color my hair because I can do that for as yeah. long as it exists. So yeah, I mean, hey, like I, I, I get, I get my hair dyed, and I love it. It's such yeah. a fun experience, and like you know, kind of changing things about like your appearance. That's fun. Yeah, it's fun to do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like yeah, art, art hard. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say art hard, and then and then we die. Yeah. I was going to say in terms of changing the appearance because my whole thing was shaved head, different styles of beard. Like, mm. look at throughout the whole year. Like, when I saw you earlier this year, I had a beard that I hadn't shaved in, like, three months because my girlfriend oh, wow. was overseas. And I'm like, look, if she can't complain, you know, so I'm just going to grow this <laughs> I thing out. I get to grow it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And, man, that, that, that was fun to shave off. But it's like, yeah, it's just, it's just mm. that's how I can be creative enjoy myself that way make it weird yeah. for people watching my videos when one day i've got a full beard the next day i've got a different beard it's different lighting it's different glasses and i realize oh that was filmed last year you know, yeah new that's... new video new year yeah exactly <laughs> i got my appearance always changed. that's always been like a fun part of um uh drawing like a little picture for myself as well because like that i feel like some things have just stayed the same like when i draw myself with like like little things sticking out of the top of my head um like that has just stuck with me the entire time I've drawn myself. It's moved. It's moved places. Like it used to be at the front of my head. Now it's at the back. And it's kind of like, 
um remembering <laughs> remembering my roots yeah. literally uh but yeah um no i've changed my appearance recently I, like i got a septum so i'm like oh it's my it's my personality now mm. um no one can see it though because i've got a big nose so i'm like oh okay uh but yeah know, you look like an animated character today so i don't really yeah exactly yeah. i look like this i look like that picture yeah uh i wanted to as a final note touch upon your education and oh, how that has... that old thing yeah that thingy and <laughs> it's what's done for your career what what degree did you do at the university and all that jazz yeah, for sure. So I um kind of like a little like I kind of mentioned it a little offhandedly, but um uh when I was kind of pushing against um at like art and like you know animation even, mm. um I went into Swinburne to do a diploma and advanced diploma in screen and media, um and that was like straight out from high school. In high school, I did like all art subjects, so yeah. you know n- no surprise there, um. But after doing, like, two years of that, I think I just really didn't... I wasn't enjoying the process because I think I was... I, I felt like I wasn't um, confident enough, yeah. really, with it. I felt like I was, like, missing something. Like, I was like, I can convey the things I want to convey story-wise, but I'm being held back by everything being, like, you know, like, actors and, like, you know, props and stuff. And it's like... It's quite an expensive thing it's also um driving around as well which also was a bit of a um issue so i was like i'm not having fun and so um i almost like took like a bit of a gap year and i just kind of was um deciding what i wanted to do and i my mum was like talking to like a client of hers so she like she um sells palms and you know like basically yeah like kind of like talks about um palms with people and that sort of thing it's like very much like very freelancey very yeah. loose but she was talking to somebody who um was an animator or like has worked in the animation in- yeah, sorry animation industry yeah and he um and um i was so i met him and he was like oh like you were thinking about going to animation and because that was kind of something i thought about i was like i want to try doing that because i still want an education but i also want to meet people like me I want to meet because I felt like I wasn't really I didn't really meet anybody like me like I met people who were my friends and like I still talk to them yeah but I I there was always a bit of difference there and so he was like go to RMIT um here are some things you should focus on so he told me to focus on um more gestural stuff so less um final like finished work because you kind of learn the fundamentals when you're there, yeah. But it's kind of the the idea of like how to convey form, how to do characters, how to, um, also like storytelling as well. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'll go to RMIT, and there was like a little prompt, and so you had to make like a little comic based off of that. And so I just made something. I was like, last minute, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna throw this together and hope it works. Long story short, I got in, which was nice. So I was like, oh yay. That would suck if I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I kind of realized, even in the first year, because I had the experience of already kind of going to uni, that um, my expectations weren't to be the best. It was to learn. Yeah. And it was, like, based on, like, you know, learning from, like, why you didn't get, like, a perfect grade in your assignment or, like, what could you have done better to improve or, like, what can you learn from other people in your class because I was a couple of years older than everyone else. Mm. They all came straight from high school. I was like, and so, like, I met people who were, like, you know, now become, like, my best friends, um, but they were, like, terrified. They were, like, you know, feeling really self-conscious about their their work. Yeah. And, like, some people were, like, already coming and knowing how to animate. And some people came in being, like, I don't know really much at all. Um and so it was like this huge spectrum of people. And what I like to say is that like we were all the art kid. And you know how I mentioned how I was the art kid earlier? Yeah. Like it was like meeting everyone else who was like that from their different schools. Yeah. And I loved it. I personally like I obviously felt intimidated because some of them were really fucking good. Mm. Um so uh like and so I thought, well, instead of feeling like like an idiot loser 
I want to try knowing like what these people are like or like how do they how do they do things like kind of put aside my insecurity and learn how they how they um how they do stuff and I've like really been influenced by the people who I've met there and the teachers are great as well because they all are very aware of the kind of people who go into animation um it's not really like any uni course I've heard about as well because like it feels like the teachers and the students almost like kind of like feel like co-workers sometimes yeah and in a way a lot of them have actually become co-workers because if we've, if we've like worked on the same thing and um no it's great it's like kind of like that that line is a little bit more blurred i think but they're also still like a mentor so it's yeah. really encouraging um to learn from them as well and uh yeah like i'm trying to think of like other things but i really enjoyed my experience because like i learned how to animate with the with the program with um the the course but i think the biggest part was just genuinely learn like meeting other people and it's i mean it's a horrific thing networking but um that's what helped i think really like kind of set me off on my art journey like I felt like um accepted I think um but yeah, yeah. no that's my education I have a shiny degree coming in the mail at some point <laughs> um because yeah. I didn't finish because uh, I also started in 2019 and we all know what happened in 2020 yeah <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I don't I need don't... to go into that they had to send mine through the mail because they forgot to add me to the uh, actual graduation list, which was hilarious. Oh, no. <laughs> so I did the in-person graduation, which I did not want to do. And then when I got mm. there, they're like, oh, we don't have your diploma. We'll have to send it to you in the mail. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm coming here and oh, getting nothing. Oh, no. So that was, oh. that was very funny and very annoying. But mm. yeah, that's all right. I graduated the same day as my brother, so it was kind of funny. You know, oh, that's cute. Well, I graduated yeah. with friends as well, so that's probably more important. But I was like, yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Friends and brother, friends and brother, different, all different. And courses. brothers and brothers' friends. Yeah, no, he has friends too. Yeah, I forget about that. <laughs> yeah, that that part. Too, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, I think because yeah, university's good. I've I've found it to be an interesting experience myself. Obviously, now I've been out of it for like the past two years, but. It, for me, yeah, I think my biggest gratitude from it was, like, the socializing uh, network to it. I found the passion that I loved, which was studying film and film history, over mm -hmm. doing the practical side of making film. I love making film still, and of course I can, because it's, like, that's a pretty easy thing to do these days. But I'm like, yeah, but I yeah. also really like discussing film and, like, understanding the history of certain elements and certain different things and because of it i have friends now who are film historians who get their stuff published in essays or audio commentaries or video essays on actual physical media releases so yeah that's that's yeah that my aspiration in life i guess i don't know or no, I can that's, film no, that's really cool sport every week <laughs> sports yeah, yeah. um yeah, no team. that's <laughs> i love it when they kick the ball yeah. um no but it's so good to meet like-minded people and people who you know, you wouldn't have met if you didn't go to uni. And I know that uni, specifically, I think, for, like, um, creative courses, um, I know that a lot of people say, like, oh, you know, don't bother. It's expensive. And obviously it is. Like, there's no yeah. denying that. But I think for the, re the reason why I think a lot of people go isn't necessarily so they can get a degree out of it. It's so they can meet people. It's so they can, like, be around other people like them. Yeah. And I think that's what I was missing with Swinburne is that, like, there weren't really, like, a lot of people like me who were the art kid. There were lots of people who really wanted to be um, uh, script writers. Uh, there were lots of people who really loved um, cinematography. And I'm like, I like both of those things, but I don't feel, like, yeah, I don't feel as connected to them because I love the way that things look on a screen. But I want control over everything. <laughs> so, like, how everything looks on a screen. So, um yeah, no, like, meeting meeting people is, I think, like, the biggest part of uni, especially, yeah. like, in creative courses nowadays. Um, the degree is, like, a nice cherry on top, but, like, for the most part, um, I <laughs> An know people who... expensive cherry on top, yes. Oh, it's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a, made of dollar bills. Yeah. Um, 
No, but like I go to this thing called Loop de Loop, uh, once every once every so often, which is held at like um an animation studio in Brunswick, and mm. basically it's this like everybody submits like a um a animation loop based on a theme. So this this um current theme is Goblin. I wish I did one, but I just was like busy. Mm. Um. But I've done one before, and it's so fun to get people to watch your loop because they all just like play on screen, and that people react to it. People can vote for their favorite. It's so cool. Um, and also you meet people like uh, the person who I met who told me to go to RMIT. Like he was there, and we talked, and it was such a weird um, thing to be like. I remember when I was completely lost with what I wanted to do, and I got encouragement to go to this course, and now my life is. So so much is like so different now like I have um like these people who are like me like my friends um I do supernova now like I feel um feel like it's kind of like made me flourish and I know it's not the same for everybody who does um like uni because it's stressful it's yeah. a fuck it's 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 a nightmare and like I've definitely had those moments where I've cried and been like I'm not good enough <laughs> ah. but you know I think yeah. it's worth it for, you know, making the friends and being a part of something really fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because I was thinking the other day how, like, if not for the fact that I was doing uni at Swinburne and had these particular tutors and lecturers who, when I met Lee, had said, oh, I've got a screening thing because he was doing Cinemaniacs. He's still doing it now. And, like, mm. he invited me and a friend to it. And the only thing that convinced me to go was the fact that one of my lecturers was doing a presentation. And I'm like, that sounds really funny because they're going to get drunk and that'll be funny. And so I went to that <laughs> and they did get drunk and it was funny. But it was also, like, really informative and the film was really interesting and the atmosphere was really nice. So I'm like, oh, these are, like, these are my people. But not, yeah, yeah, in, a, in more of a, like a business sense, in a way, I don't know, like a creative business sense for me, because it's like I'm not chatting or hanging out with them every day because they're not like my best friends. But I'm like, I see them, you know, once a fortnight or every couple of weeks whenever they have a screening on. So I'm like, you know, it's yeah, fun, you, you, you start know? you start recognizing people, and also yeah. you kind of build like um, a rapport with them. Yeah, and it's not like traditional. Like I hate, like I mentioned before, but like networking is like a painful thing and it's really funny for animators because like i know in film people will like they'll step forward they'll shake your hand they'll look you in the eye and be like i love i got i have an idea for a script and it's the worst thing you've ever heard but mm. <laughs> but they're so confident about it but there's so many animators who go i don't want to go outside because i'm scared mm. and or like i don't want to talk to them because what if they hate me what if they you know want my head on a spike and it's it's such a night and day difference and i think the loop de loop is fun because you don't have to present yourself you don't have to be like i'm this i'm that you get to go this is my this is my loop and it's like the funniest thing you've seen like all night and it's just like such a fun environment it's it's very unhinged as yeah. well um which i think is also like seeing like your lecturer drunk it's like that yeah, I wish I could see. I wish some of my lecture. I think some of them have actually come, and I've been like, "Oh, I know you. Mm. You did it." Ah, blah, 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 blah. And seeing them outside of uni as well, it kind of adds to the whole like mentor, not teacher vibe. Yeah, yeah, um, it becomes more like, "Oh, they're they're my friend now. They're not just that yeah. person who teaches me." I'm yeah, I'm forcing you to be my friend. Like, um, <laughs> I've actually um, my last teacher I had, uh, we went to a research printing class recently like she was like do you want to come and do that with me and I'm like yes absolutely you may have graded my work and we, I don't want to talk about that <laughs> at all <laughs> like I, I don't want to know um but like absolutely I want to be I want to be your friend because now I can like now it's like less of a weird thing yeah. to want um and yeah that's that's the fun part that's the yeah. fun part of being a little guy in a big creative world yeah, no, it's good. It's always fun. Yeah, cool. Well, I think I think we've covered all of our bases today. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank and you. And I, I, oh no, sorry, go no, on. I was just gonna thank you. It's all good. You can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can keep going. Yeah. No, it's the first time I've said um, "little guy" as well. I think during this whole interview, I held back. 
Is that meant to be a, like a derogatory thing? Or is it like no. just how you like your buddy system? Hey, it's a little guy. It's my man. Hey, come on. I'm a little guy. No, oh. it's just I just say like little guy to everything. So I was like, I need to not say that during the whole oh, <laughs> interview. Could, yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's it's fine. Yay. <laughs> I did, I did. I just put put was just part of your natural conversation. I didn't find it as like, yeah. I don't think you're f- saying that I'm short. I don't care. <laughs> I swear I'm, I don't I'm, care. I'm not triggered. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> um, but yes, no. Thank you for thank you for giving me your time and and providing us with your life story. Well, thank you for yeah. having me and letting me talk at you for that, for quite a while. No, that was a great time. Yeah. Cool. Well, where can the fellow audience members find your work? Obviously, there'll be links oh. in the description. I'm not an idiot, but still, it could be given some verbal. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little verbal, a little verbal vomit. Um, mm. You can find me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active um, under Cyborg. It's mm. like Cyborg, but replace the B with a C. Yeah. Um, I'm also on uh, Twitter or whatever, whatever it gets called now. Mm. X. I don't know. I don't think it's get yes. called, it gets no, called that. As long as the URL is still Twitter, it's still Twitter. It's still Twitter to me. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm also Cycorg on like Facebook and like YouTube or whatever. Like, um, yeah, that's where yeah. I am. I I have an Etsy page as well, which is um linked under my website, which is again Cycorg. Mm. And yeah, that's that's who I am. I, that's where I've cemented myself. That's my that's my name. It's so funny how we go through the whole entire interview. I forgot to say, oh yeah, your name's Cycorg. We probably should establish that. <laughs> yeah. Just just um, ADR it and be like, oh, this is Cycorg. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's how I think of you more as the friend who I've known since high school rather than the artist, but it's also like, uh, if not for the oh. art, I probably would not be talking to you today. So it's like, you know. Exactly. Like exactly. It if, it went for, if it went for our um, mutual compulsions, to to art yeah. we would not have been talking yeah no it was great i just love how one night i was just thinking fuck i should interview freya she's like an artist <laughs> and stuff she like knows stuff oh my god <laughs> she, yeah. she does like art and shit <laughs> yes exactly she's a drawer yeah, yeah she, <laughs> she's a drawer yeah yeah cool well yeah so thank yeah. you and yeah go ahead check out her stuff well, thanks down for below. having me yeah no it's great awesome all right so we're, we're done cool I think they're done. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yay. Excellent. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, all of Freya's links will be down below in the description, including her Instagram, her Facebook, and whatnot. Um, yeah, thanks again to Freya for spending her time with me on Zoom. It was it was really great. Uh, <laughs> I had a hell of a time doing the interviews. It's, it's nice to see how far people have gotten in their lives. I've been following her on socials for years. I've been friends with her since high school. And it's just it's just so nice to see how far people have, you know, come in their life and to see what stuff that they've gone through. So I hope you enjoyed this experience and this video and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Feel free to check out any other videos I have linked around from other interviews and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.